Hi, Dr. Rafferty here with instructions for downloading, saving, and using instructor feedback. For instructions on how to get to this view feedback link in Canvas, see my other video. If you are not a Canvas user, perform a search online looking for how to view instructor feedback and my last name. Click the view feedback link. To gain viewing space, you can click the Hide Course Navigation menu button. You can also move the page to the top left, and you can stretch it to fill up the rest of the screen. Be sure to double click to stabilize the screen in place. You can view feedback in this manner, and it has some advantages and disadvantages. One advantage, you can view feedback online, which is handy when there's very little feedback. Another advantage is you can type in responses to your instructor's feedback in the feedback box. Just click the feedback box, click the reply, and then type in your response. This is pretty handy if there's very little feedback, and so this view might suffice. Some disadvantages, however, is that if there is a feedback, this view has some major drawbacks. If there is very little feedback, then this view might suffice. However, when there is a lot of feedback, this view has some major drawbacks. The first drawback is all the scrolling that's required to see all of the feedback. Notice how you have to use both vertical bars to see all of the feedback. Another drawback is, and this is probably the most crucial one, is that a resubmission of a document overwrites the first one, which means that all of the instructor feedback disappears. So if you have a lot of feedback, like the student here, you should download the document to your computer. If you're not already at the top of the view, use the vertical scroll bars to show the options bar. Click the Download Annotated PDF arrow on the left side. Note that depending on your download settings, you may have to click the up arrow on the Download Indicator box near the bottom left side of the screen. In the pop-up box, select Open, or if you want to use PDF documents to always open automatically, choose the Always Open in Adobe Reader. When the Adobe Viewer loads, note that you are, have not yet downloaded the document to your computer. Move your mouse pointer towards the top of the screen and you'll see the document name displayed and some options for handling the document. Click the Download arrow. In the Save As window, navigate to the folder of your choice and then name the document. I highly encourage the use of a naming convention to prevent confusion down the road. Remember I said earlier that a resubmission overwrites everything, so it is a good idea to name feedback documents in a way that A allows easy identification of the assignment and B the feedback itself. For example here I might choose to name this feedback and put a date in there. Another option is, is to name it and put the version of the feedback in there. Whatever naming convention that you use, just be sure it allows you to select the correct feedback when revising your work. A major advantage of saving feedback to your computer is it allows you to view it without logging into Canvas and it saves you the trouble of downloading it each time you want to see the feedback. With the document saved to your computer and opened, you have two options for viewing feedback. Consider closing the right-hand panel to provide more room and to reduce distractions. The first option is called the mouse hover function. With the document open, look for boxes around text. The box indicates feedback associated with that area. You can hover the mouse over the box to see the feedback. This is an excellent option to see where feedback is and what it is. The problem though is, once you move the mouse pointer away from the box, the feedback disappears. So another option is to open the feedback. Note the small yellow callout message. 
double click the yellow callout message box to open the feedback off to the right. This option works well if you have two screens to work from. Some things to know about this feedback box. When hovering over the box, the callout line appears indicating which part of the document the feedback relates to. It's the name of the person who provided the feedback. The vertical scroll bar. The date and time of the feedback. Of course, the feedback itself. Also note that you can resize the box. You can also move the box around. There is a reply link. This allows you to post a reply to an instructor's comment or question, but remember this can only be used when viewing the document in Canvas. However, if you are not going to use the feedback right away and you want to remind yourself about something important later on, you can use this reply for yourself. So for example, click the reply link and then type in a comment for yourself. You can ignore the post link since this is not functional when you're offline. You can also right click on the feedback box to bring up other options. The reply, this is the same as the reply box I just showed. The set status should leave that selected as none. The show comment at box actually brings up another way to view all feedback. I won't show that here because it looks complicated and just causes more distractions. You can also use the open all pop-ups box. Note, however, that this opens every single feedback box, which can become quite confusing. You can minimize all pop-ups, and when you do, it leaves the last pop-up box that you used still showing. You can also use the Make Current Properties default, which is handy for when you want to use the same settings in all future documents. For properties, you can simply ignore this. When there is a lot of feedback, printing the document provides a hard copy that you can reference while revising your work, and I highly encourage you to use this option when you know you will have to resubmit documents. Use the following steps to print the document with feedback. Go to File, Print. In the Print window, note that there are seven pages to this document. Locate the comments and forms. In the drop-down box, make sure that Documents and Markups is selected. Then, use the Summarize Comments button. In the pop-up window, select Yes. And note, if your document has several pages, you may see a progress bar. When the summarizing process is complete, you see a change in the number of pages. In this case, there are now 11. The additional four pages are the feedback comments. If you click through the pages, you'll see a summaries page of the comments and the number of comments that it refers to. While in the print window, you can adjust the printing features. It is a good idea to ensure that the size button is selected. The print size should be 8.5 by 11 inches. The orientation should be set to Auto Portrait Landscape. You can set the properties to print in black and white. Use the Pages to Print feature to print the pages you need. In this example, I don't need to print the first four pages. I only want to print the pages that contain detailed feedback. So I select the Pages option and type in the pages I want to print. In this case, 5 through 11. Even if your printer supports printing front and back, I do not recommend this because the document will print with your work on one side and the feedback on the other. This will cause you to have to flip back and forth to see the feedback. A more effective option is to print on only one side. That way you can place the pages side by side. When ready, 
Click Print. Now I will describe the features of the printed documents. On your document you will see small boxes with numbers. For example, 1, 2, 3, and so forth. These numbers correspond to the numbered feedback on the feedback page. Note how the feedback page number indicates which page of your document the feedback refers to. When a feedback page includes more than one feedback comment, the feedback is numbered as number one, number two, number three, and so forth. These numbers correspond to the small boxes on your document. For example, number five here refers to the number five in the document. It is a good practice to download and save documents that have feedback associated with them. Saving the documents to your computer allows you to A. View the feedback in your computer screen, B. Print the feedback for use while revising your work, and C. And most important, it prevents you from losing access to feedback should you need to resubmit a document. In my public speaking class, it is not unusual for students to submit speech outlines multiple times. A first submission may end up with a three to four pages of feedback, a resubmission may have only two or three pages, and a second resubmission may have just one page. The goal of each resubmission is an improved outline. However, unless students have downloaded and saved all feedback, the instant they resubmit an assignment, they lose access to all previous feedback because resubmissions overwrite all previous work. A student who neglects to download and save feedback can become quite frustrated upon seeing a message from the instructor such as, there are several unresolved issues with your paper. Please review my previous feedback, make the corrections, and then resubmit your paper. Students who failed to download and save feedback will not be able to see that previous feedback, and thus are placed in the position of asking their instructor to repeat the feedback, which some instructors may not want to do. So there you have it. You now know how to download, save, and view instructor feedback.